Hi, Gem Fam. I'm really excited to connect with you guys today. Um, interesting energy came up for you almost immediately when I checked in with you. A big part of that is because November is just, it's one of those months you have to be kind of paying attention. That's the best way I'd put it for everybody. It's, it's a month where you can't just kind of coast along and assume that everything's going according to plan and everybody's on the same page and all the projects are just going to flow. Not to say that it's going to be a month of trauma and drama and, and being ill at ease, but it's just one of those months where you are supposed to be paying attention. The energies are designed to make you check in with your thought practices, with your daily habits, and with how you are connecting with yourself and with others, with your dreams, with your soul, with your life vision. And so it is designed to be a little bit, not of an obstacle course, but of a check-in. And for you, we start getting into this really interesting territory and Sag season, which is so much about mirrors. I always call this mirror season when you are in your opposite sign energy, which is Sagittarius, which will be starting around the 22nd of the month you are starting to engage with the mirror season. Not only that, Jupiter is going home. I'm going to start shuffling here while I'm talking about this. Jupiter is going home to Sagittarius on November 8th, which means you are getting basically a big energetic spotlight on your relational sign for the next year. Jupiter is going to be hanging in Sagittarius for the next year, and that means that you are getting a huge infusion of energy with how you connect to other people. Now, it's a great thing. Jupiter is a benefic, positive planet, tends to bring a lot of really good energy. Queen of Swords. Hi, look at you guys being all directional and focused. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it's a great energy to have there, actually. But what's really funny is, <laughs> so it's starting its transit in Jupiter, or in Sagittarius, but while that's going on, while we have the beginning of that transit, we also have the second half of Venus retrograde, which is, which is going to be retrograding in Libra, your fifth house energy, your heart, romance, creativity. You're going to be reassessing how that's working for you. Three of Pentacles, fantastic. And then we have a Mercury retrograde, your ruling planet, going retrograde in your relational sign of Sagittarius, right after Sag season, or right after the Libra, the Venus retrograde in Libra finishes, the same day, in fact. So as you can see, you're getting highlights here very specifically with, you know, your romantic core, your creative core, and how you relate to others. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying you kind of have to pay attention to your interactions. You kind of have to pay attention to where you are relying on old patterning, where you are opening up to new patterns. You know, be intentional about setting any patterning that you have because we do need practices. You know, we do need to create practices that help us along. And there is such a thing as a positive pattern, right? Oh, four of pentacles and eight of swords came out. Okay, so, but you know, this is retrograde stuff. We have to check in here with how we're valuing ourselves. Now, I had a note for you guys, which is everything will be reflecting back at you because we're starting to get these infusions of Sag energy. And we have some interesting things going on. We have the North Node of the Moon going into Cancer. Eight of Wands. Three, oh, two of Cups and the Fool. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love this. I'm going to pull one more card. And then I'll finish talking about the astrology and then we're going to get into this discussion because this is fantastic. Four of Cups. Okay, there you go. That's It's so funny, you guys. You guys are the epitome of retrograde season, which is like forward motion, forward motion. Oh, wait, no, wait. Slow down, check in. Um, okay, so we have a few things. We have the North Node of the Moon is going into Cancer uh, on November 6th. And that's your second house of value and money. That's a really great thing, actually. The infusion of energy there is going to feel really positive and supportive for you. And actually, the way that the energies are kind of lining up right now, they're doing some really nice things for Gemini's for basically 2019. They're setting you up for some really good time, for really good energy for you. So um, that that's going to be fantastic for you. You also have your full moon this month. 
um, which is on the 23rd. So right after Sag season starts, we have a zero degree Gemini full moon. You guys, this is huge for you. And it explains a lot of what's going on with the cards here, but I just want to like take a moment, Gems, and just say this. You've been through a big learning arc in the last like three years. And for each of you, that's been different. For some of you, you've, you've had a lot of success in one area and then a lot of relearned lessons in other areas. Um, a lot of places you've had to check back in with over and over again. You've had a lot of areas where you've needed to have some repeat lessons, I think. Not every area of your life, though. There's been a lot of areas of your life that have gone quite well. This zero degree full moon for you is a very symbolically important moment to acknowledge that that energetic cycle is now completing and you've got to let it go. And that's what the cards are telling me here because look at what's amazing about this. So we start off right away with two amazing cards. For Geminis especially, I feel like this is energy that just works with you. You know, Queen of Swords is focused, like when, when you guys are on your game and you have decided you are going to work on something, create something, make something happen, you're very good at zeroing in, asking the right questions, following up with the right communication, and making it happen. And that is kind of the energy here. Now, the other side of Queen of Swords is like cutting something out that no longer serves you, right? She's kind of the... Um, the boundary setter and she tends to be very willing to make heavy cuts where something's not serving her anymore. So you've kind of got this like laser vision energy going on here and it has to do with some kind of project, something that you want to create, something that you want to manifest when it comes to your who you're working with, who, where, what you're creating with. And there's some kind of communal, um, co-creative energy going on there. So these are really great because they're all focused on the future. They're all focused on what's ahead and how that's going to come into your life and how it connects with you. It's really, really good energy for gems. I feel like you guys, one of the notes that I was going to say for you is that even though we're having these retrogrades in very interesting places in your chart and your energy, and even though we're having some of this energy, like I was saying, you have to pay attention to what's going on. You just have to kind of like take the time, pay attention. You are actually going to be getting, as the month goes on, more and more of this reconnected energy where you may have felt disconnected, um, almost floating outside of life and not feeling very connected to what's going on. These energies are all about connection and I feel like there is a big infusion of connection coming up for you so that's there there's already this immediately this infusion once again pay attention to the details both the Venus and the Mercury retrograde riding with us all the way through November it's a good time to pay attention to details but here's what's interesting you guys you start to get this energy coming in for what you want and then what shows up but these guys, okay. So you've got the North Node of the Moon in Cancer directing our energy toward value, what you're allowed to do, your money, how you value yourself, um, what you're capable of doing when it comes to like the practical resources you have, and also your value as a being. Whenever you have Four of Pentacles showing up here, it is a fear of growth. Same with Eight of Swords. These two, I sometimes find though that these two are very protective energies. They are here to slow you down, get you centered, and help you to prepare for something. Um, they do have a huge shadow side, which is that you can get very obsessive about how you want to control it. You can get very obsessive about how you're not ready, and you can get into your head, and you can come up with a lot of narratives as to why you can't progress. You don't have the resources right now. You're not allowed to do that. You've never had that skill set before, so why would somebody trust you now? You know, that self-censoring critical voice is represented in these energies. And, you know, they like to show up when you start getting some good movement going on. They like to show up when a door actually opens, especially after a time of feeling possibly disconnected and challenged, um, especially after a time of slowdown. Now, these are integration cards, and we are in retrogrades, and this has been a year of retrogrades, and, you know, we're getting some of the last heavy hitters this month, 
Um, you are so it's important to sit with this. It's important to sit with this energy. I almost always say with the eight of swords, this is a precursor to a huge energetic breakthrough. And in fact, it's like you have to be pulled in to a really uncomfortable spot in yourself before you slingshot forward. And in fact, it's crazy because if you are willing to sit there, gems, with those self-limiting thoughts, with those areas of yourself where you're cutting off and give it some grace, no judgment. There's no judgment here. This is all about like being the observer, connecting with that observing tendency being very healing and loving toward it because we have healing energy with a Venus retrograde. It slingshots you directly into this stuff right here. I mean, you guys, this is so Gemini right here. Eight of swords, eight of wands. No movement, trapped, thinking, way overthinking, a whole bunch of action, a whole bunch of movement. You're capable of both. You're capable of both. But what I'm seeing here is a huge new beginning coming your way. Now, a lot of this may not start to, to fully get embodied until December, January. You know, we're working through some slower energies and that's what this Four of Cups is. We'll talk about this in a second. But I'll tell you about this because some of you may experience this sooner rather than later. It's pretty insistent energy and it's quite powerful. Um, you know, Eight of Wands... I like to call it the magic carpet energy. It's like suddenly you are being whisked into some new circumstances and the, the steps just show up so fast. You know, it's it starts the phone call and before you know it, you're five steps into a huge new project. You know, it starts with um, a mutual meetup with some friends and suddenly you have a new best friend or a new love interest. Um, it starts with, something small and suddenly all the steps just line up, line up, line up and the momentum is so huge and it's so fast. Yes, it has to do with relating to others, right? Like I said, there's this huge infusion of Sagittarian energy coming up, which means that you are going to be connecting again. You are going to be romantically connecting, work connecting, connecting with the people you want to work with. And it does require a key thing which is this fool. I mean, this is such good stuff right here. So is the fool. But we got, we got to talk about the fool because when the fool shows up, for those of us who've been living and experiencing things for a little while, the fool shows up, we've got to, we've got to sit down with the basics here and make sure we're checking in with that. These are amazing things. This is really a new adventure, a new identity, new beginnings, deep connection, opportunities coming in for you to change around some things in your life, things that maybe have felt stale or stiltified are getting shifted around. There's a lot of energy here for that. It does require you engaging with this fool energy. Now, the fool is the hero of the journey, right? He is the hero's journey. He is the guy who has just left home and he's going to go search out his destiny, you know, because he knows it's there. And he hasn't been burnt by the fire yet. And he hasn't um, run into some of those challenges that could potentially cause block blockages, self-protection mechanisms, patterning that doesn't help us, right? He does not live with that weighing him down. So in order for you to engage with this energy, and honestly, even this energy, You kind of have to be in this headspace, you know, wariness. You guys are, <laughs> you have the advantage of having that mercurial energy, that ability to think quickly and to put thoughts together and to create via thought very efficiently. You're amazing at it. It's a double-edged sword though, because you can also very quickly think yourself into identities that are self-limiting why you can't do something. So the fool is asking you to throw out a lot and to breathe into this next thing and not to stick your heels in. You know, if you've ever like walked a dog, um, especially on the smaller side, you know, you're going along on your walk and they decide they're done walking they dig their heels in. I think this is any dog. Any, any dog can do this but uh, they dig their heels in and somehow it's like, you cannot get that dog to move forward. They are not having it today. 
they're done with that walk, right? It's like you can do that sometimes when the best things are right ahead of you. Now, Four of Cups, right, is important here as well. As far as how to navigate this kind of cha-cha dance that is going on with the energies and with how November is rolling, um, Four of Cups, I think, is one of the greatest gifts you can have. You have a couple of fours here, Gems, which means that you've got something to integrate. You've got something to culminate. You've got something that you need to kind of put amends to within yourself, within your valuing, with how you're valuing yourself. And that's where that full moon is huge. Really for you specifically this month, take the time to enjoy the symbolism of it at the very least, but... When you get fours like this, one has to do with your financial security and how you value, how you feel you're able to move through the world and what you have in the world and where you feel lack and where you feel impatient when it comes to emotional breakthroughs. You got to sit with this. Now, four of cups is amazing because it's that promise that something good is just like right out of your line of sight. You got to trust that. You can get into this headspace where you think, mm, I can't trust this. I can't trust this. Can't trust it. It's not going to come anyway, so why bother? That's dangerous. That is dangerous. So, I'm having to take a breath. Like, I get nervous energy just talking to you guys today somehow because I think there's just like you're ready. You're so ready for all of this, and yet there's this check in. There's a check in being asked here of you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull one final card. The thing is, you guys, you've got some really good stuff around you. And I think it's important sometimes for really beautiful, hopeful, warm things to come into our lives just for the fact that they will wake up any old pattern that wants to hold you back, any old fear thinking that wants to hold you back. It'll wake it up and get it cleared out for you. And then you can move forward. And that's kind of what this is going. It's like, oh, here's a good thing. Here are some limbers of where you're going next. Ooh, no, I'm not allowed to do that. No, it's okay. Here's more. Okay, yes, I can do that. And then it's like, but also it takes some time to build. That's the mini summarization of this reading. I'm pulling one more card from my other deck here. Um, it just flew over here. Let's see what it is. Two of Pentacles. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Fork in the road, right? You can choose to stick with your old patterning. You can choose to move forward. Um, anytime we have retrogrades like this with Venus and Mercury, which is, you get to choose. If you're very highly aware of your old patterning and where you can go next, we get to choose. Be authentic to yourself. Choose with authenticity to who you are. Not just because you can bridge the gap between people, not just because you can communicate with everybody and and do every job and stay busy and, and stay, um, stay fluid with your communication, not just because you can take on the responsibilities, not just because you can make all that movement. Only give your time and attention to the things that feel good. The Two of Pentacles is all about a juggler who is trying to please everyone. And then, therefore never commits to the path that feels right for him and really never finds peace. And sometimes we can stay in the Two of Pentacles energy for a while thinking we're doing a lot when we're really just in a holding pattern. We're treading water. Be aware of that, you guys, because I think you might be tempted. I think you might be tempted to stick with some old things. And it's time to shift it all around. I am going to close it out there. I am really excited for gems. I think this month is going to feel really good and really exciting. There's so much new potential all around you. And your goal this month is to just kind of lovingly watch where you hold yourself back and breathe through it. And the good stuff will just keep coming. You know, your goal this month is to be the fool and open up. And I think you'll do amazing. Um, I'll leave my Venus retrograde info for those of you who maybe need that extra little toolkit. I'll leave all the info. I have um, a general overarching Venus retrograde video as well as Vimeo extras if you're interested. So all that info will be down there as well as my website, my email, 
And you can follow me on Instagram at the Sarah Tarot. I would love to see you there. I'm also wearing Pink Loon's gorgeous, handmade, one-of-a-kind jewelry. It gets me through so much in my life. You know, having a friend like her in my life who creates with such authenticity is amazing. So I will leave her link with a 15% off promo for y'all. Um, and I will see you in December for more of this mirror season that is here for Gemini's. And I just hope you have a beautiful time with this energy. Go easy on yourself. Take a breath. Turn off that the mental faculties every once in a while and uh, have some fun. I love you guys. <laughs>